Okay, today we are working with um, lesson 2.5, which is factoring, solving, and finding the roots of polynomials with the rational root theorem. So we use the rational root theorem when we have a polynomial that cannot be factored using the methods we've already learned already. So um, basically what the rational root theorem says is that if um, a polynomial, so this here represents a polynomial and um, a sub n represents the first term or the leading coefficient in the polynomial. Um, a sub zero represents the constant or the, or the number at the end that does not have the variable x. So in this first example, 1a, the a sub n would be 1. Your n would be 4. Your a sub 0 would be negative 12. So that's where those um, kind of numbers, what they represent. So when you are in a situation like this, where you have something with five terms that cannot be factored using traditional methods, because the most number of terms that we were factoring in the past were five, um, I'm sorry, four, <laughs> using factoring by grouping. Um, but if you have five, then you have to use this rational root theorem to get at least started. Now, this does not give you all of your roots. This will only give you roots that are rational numbers. So any kind of a root or any kind of a solution that has an imaginary number, or i, or a square root, um, will not be found using the rational root theorem. It is only for rational numbers, which are uh, positive or negative um, whole or fractions that can be made of positive and negative whole numbers. So a fraction like one half, positive two, negative three fourths, those are all rational numbers. So the rational root theorem only gives you your rational solutions. And it doesn't even tell you if they are going to be solutions or not until you plug them into the synthetic division. So this can sometimes be a little bit um, time consuming because you have to guess and check and try a few options. However, in these first problems, since this is the first time you're using the rational root theorem, um, we're going to start you with um, problems that you mostly can use either a positive one or a negative one to break this down. I might have one or two problems where you have to use a positive or a negative two or three, but nothing crazy. You're, you should not have to try more than two or three values. Anyway, you'll see what I mean. All right, so based on this rational root theorem, the P in the numerator represents the factors of the constant term. So your constant is the number at the end here over q, which represents all the factors of your leading coefficient, or your a sub n. So that's the coefficient here. And your a sub 0 is your constant. So if we use that principle over here in our first term, the factors of my constant, well, the constant is negative 12. So negative 12 does have lots of factors. Um, it has now in the past we've only really focused on the the positive factors, but 12 can have factors of 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, but they are also positive or negative. So if I'm listing my possible rational roots, I would say um, I'm going to actually go over here and write this as p over q where p is made up of all the positive and negative factors of 12. And I'm going to put them in order. So positive or negative 1, comma, positive or negative 2, comma, positive or negative 3, comma, positive or negative 4, comma, positive or negative 6, and positive or negative tw oops, 12. And yes, you do need to put a comma and a plus minus between every single one of those if you want full credit. Now the Q it, um, represents the factors of your leading coefficient. 
Well, if there's a leading co, if there is no number in front of your uh, leading term, then your leading coefficient is one. So the factors of one are just positive or negative one. So if I'm dividing any of these factors of 12 by positive or negative one, then they're not really going to change. So I'm gonna rewrite this here as my possible rational roots because I don't have enough room to simplify this. So this is how I would set it up by first of all, setting up a fraction where that has all of the factors of my constant, again, which was negative 12, in the numerator with plus minus signs and commas in between. And then the factors of your leading coefficient, which in this case is one, and, which, and then positive or negative one. So now we divide each of the numbers on the top by each of the numbers on the bottom. Well, if you're just dividing by positive or negative one, whether you divide positive one by positive one, positive one by negative one, negative one divided by positive one, or negative one divided by negative one, you are still going to have positive or negative one as options. So positive or negative one divided by positive or negative one is going to equal positive or negative one. Same is going to happen with the two. If you take positive or negative two divided by positive or negative two, you're going to get positive or negative two. The same thing happens with the three, four, six, and twelve. So your possible rational roots, if you're asked to make a list, oops, if you are asked to make a list of your possible rational roots, this is the list that you are asked to give. All right. So if your leading coefficient is one, that makes it really nice and easy. So that's why I have this note here that if the Q or your leading coefficient is either positive or negative one, then when you take P divided by Q, it's just gonna equal P, which represents the factors of the constant. So Again, whenever your leading coefficient is one, you really don't even need to divide by positive or negative one because it's just gonna equal what you started with. All right, so now that we have our list, what do we do with it? Well, um, we are going to try to see if any of these numbers, so there's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, there's 12 different possible rational roots. And again, this does not, this does not represent all of the roots. Um, <laughs> but we need to figure out if any of these numbers are actual solutions to the equation when I set this polynomial equal to zero. Let me erase these over here. So <clears throat> we are going to use synthetic division because we need the numbers of the polynomial that we get after we divide also. So we're going to start out with positive one. So we want to know is one change my color back, is one a solution to this polynomial? So we basically want to know when, what values of x will make this polynomial equal to zero. So before you use synthetic division, double check to make sure that you're not missing any terms. So we are not, we've got x to the fourth, third, second, first, and constant. So your leading coefficient is one, then you have a negative four, a negative one, 16, and negative 12. Then extend this a little bit. And we will know if one is a solution to the polynomial if we get a remainder of zero. So bring down your one, then multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add multiply, add, and we get a remainder of zero. So what that means is that one is an actual solution. So 
So x equals 1 is the solution. Well, where does that 1 come from? What kind of a factor would we have in this polynomial that would give us a solution of 1? So this goes back to the whole where does 1 come from? It comes from a factor of x minus 1. So we, what we just did is we divided this polynomial by x minus 1. And when you're dividing by a, a binomial, you have to change the sign here. So if x minus 1 is a factor of the polynomial, then you get a remainder of 0, which also means that 1 is a solution. Um, because when you're solving in the past on your quiz, and then last lessons, you want to factor this completely and then set each factor equal to zero. Well, if I know I have a factor of x minus one and I set x minus one equal to zero, I get one as my solution. All right, so what do I do with these other numbers? Well, if you have an x to the fourth, this one now is an x to the third term. So we'll have x to the third minus three x squared minus 4x plus 12. And it's equal to zero, not because the remainder is zero, but is because we're taking this whole thing and we're setting it equal to zero. So we're taking this equation, just like we did in our last lessons, we want to set the polynomial equal to zero to figure out what values of x will make this equation equal to zero. And this will help us in our next unit when we start um, solving, or sorry, graphing. All right, so now that we're down to four terms in this polynomial, we can then ask ourselves, can we factor this by grouping? In this case, I can look at this and tell that it, we can factor this by grouping, um, but in the next example, we're not gonna be so lucky. Or is it the next, yeah, the next example, we're not gonna be so lucky. So let's factor by grouping. So I'm gonna cut this down the middle. Um, these two terms, I can factor out an x squared, which then leaves me with x minus 3 in parentheses. From these two terms, I can factor out a negative 4. And remember, when you're factoring out a negative 4, that's going to change your signs. So you'll get x minus 3, so that if you multiplied this back together, it would equal what you started with. Now we are factoring out the x minus 3 which gives us x squared minus 4 equals 0. And then again, we did have that x minus 1, but I've already got the solution for that. So now I need to find the solutions for these. So if I set my x minus 3 equal to 0 and solve, add 3 to both sides, and I get x equals 3, that is another solution. It does happen to be a rational solution. It's one of these up here. So positive 3 is one of the possible rational roots. And then my x squared minus 4, I could factor that into x plus 2, x minus 2, or I can just set it equal to 0, move the 4 over, which makes it positive, then square root both sides, and get x equals positive or negative 2. So there is no multiplicity here. Some of you are making mistakes on your quizzes when you had positive and negative numbers that you said there was a multiplicity of two. Positive two and negative two are not the same value. They are two different values. So you have a solution of positive two, you have a solution of negative two, one of each, that's it. And if we look at our original equation, we have a degree of four, which means there should be exactly four solutions which is exactly what I have here. And they just so happen to all be rational numbers. And they're all in this list up here. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. Let's move on to the next problem. All right, so once again, when you're looking at problem B, your degree is four. So we know we should have four solutions. They may be rational, they may be irrational, they may be unreal, not real, or I, or imaginary. But we need to find all four solutions. So we're going to start, we can't factor this right away, so we're going to list the possible rational solution, or rational roots, by taking the factors of my constant, which is positive. So again, I would probably start this out with saying P over Q 
where P is the factors of my constant. So positive and negative one, don't forget one is always a factor of everything. Positive or negative two, positive and negative seven, and positive and negative 14. Divided by Q, which represents the factors of my leading coefficient. So my leading coefficient is one, the factors of one are just positive and negative one. So if I divide each of these by positive and negative one, I'll still get the same for, or actually eight numbers, positive and negative one, positive and negative two, positive or negative seven, and positive or negative 14. So these are my possible rational roots, but they are not all of them gonna be solutions. All right, so once again, I'm gonna try starting with one. So I'm gonna use synthetic division, put one in the corner, See if I get a remainder of zero. Again, don't forget to look for missing terms. In this case, we are not. We have one, negative seven, negative three, 23, and negative 14. Need a little bit of space. Bring that first leading coefficient down. One times one is one. Add, we get negative six. Um, multiply, you get negative six. Add, you get negative nine multiply and you get negative nine, add, you get 14, multiply, you get 14, add, you get zero. So that tells us again that one is a solution. So x equals one is one of your actual roots. Roots are another name for solutions. But the factor that it would have come from is x minus one. And then these numbers that are left over tell us the other factor. So again, what we're basically doing is we're setting, taking this polynomial and setting it equal to zero, just like we did with other polynomial equations, and we're trying to find out what values of x will make this polynomial equal to zero. So we're solving this equation by um, using synthetic division to help us, a uh, rational root theorem to help us start factoring. And then, um, but this is the, the remaining polynomial. So when we divide this polynomial by x minus one, we get x to the third minus six x squared minus nine x plus 14. And if I were to multiply the x minus one with this polynomial here, it should equal what we started with. Okay, so we don't wanna go back to the original equation. Um, we do wanna look at this new polynomial here and factor it a little bit more. However, I can look at this and I know from looking at it that I will not be able to factor this by grouping, which means we are going to have to use synthetic division again, but do not use the original. Use this new polynomial. So you've got a leading coefficient of one, negative six, negative nine, 14. 14 is still the constant. It still has the same possible rational roots. So let's try one again. So we're gonna take this new polynomial, put one in the corner, and again, see if we get a remainder of zero. It's possible to get that one will work more than once. So one, negative six, negative nine, and 14. So if I carry down the one, I get one, multiply, I get one, add, I get negative five, multiply, I get negative five, add, I get negative 14, multiply, I get negative 14, and add, I get zero. Great, so that tells me I have another solution of one. So now I can add with a multiplicity of two. So that means I have another factor of x minus one. And then these numbers here will give us our remaining um, polynomial that we have to factor. So just so we're clear about what we actually did here. So the starting equation, x to the four minus seven x to the third minus three x squared plus 23 x minus 14. What we're essentially doing is setting that equal to zero. And to help us factor this, we're using synthetic division. We found that one is a solution, which means x minus one is the factor. 
and x to the third minus 6x squared minus 9x plus 14 is the other factor. So essentially what we did is we took this polynomial and we factored out an x minus 1. Over here we did that again with this new polynomial. So from this polynomial we basically factored out an x minus 1, which then leaves us with this 1, negative 5, and negative 14, which is the trinomial x squared minus 5x minus 14. And then we have this x minus 1 that we had factored out in the beginning still is equal to 0. Well, now we're to a point where we've got a quadratic. So once you get to a quadratic, you have quadratic formula, you have factoring or square root method that you can use to solve. Well, I'm looking at this and that is an easy one to factor. So x squared factors into x and x. My two numbers that multiply together to equal 14 but subtract to equal 5 are 7 and 2. Because it's a negative 14, my signs have to be different. But the larger one has to be negative so that I'll get that negative 5 in the middle. So essentially, these are all the factors of f of x. So when we factor this completely, we get an x minus 1, an x minus 1, an x minus 7, and an x plus 2. So both of these factors would have a solution of 1, which is why x equals 1 with a multiplicity of 2. If we took the x minus 7 and set that equal to 0, we would get a solution of 7. If we took the x plus 2 and set that equal to 0, we would get a solution of negative 2. So again, we have four solutions, two of them being 1, one of them being 7, and another one being negative 2. And they are all, in fact, rational numbers. So um, we haven't got any square root answers yet or imaginary answers yet, but there will be some on your homework assignment. Okay, um, so the next one. Letter C. Pick. All right, so this one doesn't have an f of x equals. It just has the polynomial equal to zero, which when you are solving polynomials, you do want them to equal to zero. And this one's going to have a little bit more interesting um, pos list of possible rational roots because our leading coefficient is three. It is not one. So my P over Q where p is the represents the factors of my constant. The only factors of 3 or negative 3 are positive or negative 1, comma, positive or negative 3. Well, it just so happens my leading coefficient is also 3, so that's my q. Well, the factors of 3, again, are 1 and 3, but they could be positive or negative. Oops, I found my 1 now. Okay, now here's where it gets interesting. If we divide the positive or negative 1 by positive or negative 1, that will just equal positive or negative 1. If you divide positive or negative 3 by positive or negative 1, so we divide those two, it will simplify again to positive or negative 3. Here is where we get our next answer, so if or possible rational roots. So if we were to divide the 1, by the 3, that would give us a positive or negative 1 third. If we took the 3 divided by the 3, that would just equal 1, which is already in our list. So we do not need to write it again. So again, 1 divided by 1 is 1. 3 divided by 1 is 3. 1 divided by 3 is 1 third. 3 divided by 3 is 1, which is already there. Again, don't forget to put your plus minus signs in front and a comma in between. So this is our official list of possible rational solutions. Now let's find the actual ones. Again, I would probably start up by substituting 1 into my synthetic division to see if 1 is a solution. Look to see if you're missing any terms. We are not. So I can write 3, 11, 5, negative 3 and see if I'm going to get a remainder of 0. Carry down my 3, multiply, I get 3, add, I get 14, multiply, I get 14, 
add, I get 19. Well, that is not going to give me a, a 3 here to get 0. So that's all right. I'm just going to erase and start again. But I don't have to erase everything. I just have to erase the number. I mean, the, lead, the 3 isn't going to change. Um, but instead of 1, now we're going to substitute negative 1. So instead of, so we bring down the 3, but multiply by negative 1, which will give us negative 3. Add, which gives you 8. Multiply, which gives you negative 8. Add, and you get negative 3. Multiply, you get positive 3. Add, you get 0. So we do get a remainder of 0, which means negative 1 is a solution. So that's one of our solutions, and we should have three solutions because our degree is three. That also tells us that we have a factor of x plus one. So x plus one gives you a solution of negative one. Then these three numbers here are going to make up the trinomial. 3x squared plus 8x minus 3. So we could try to use the um, rational root theorem again and use synthetic division. However, I believe this one can be factored with um, a C method. So if I take my A value, which is 3, times my C value, which is negative 3, color, I will get an A C value of negative 9. And the two numbers that multiply together equal 9 that have a difference or would subtract to equal 8 are 1 and 9. So with um, AC method, you're going to go from three terms to four. My first term stays the same. My last term stays the same. In order for the, and again, we said the two numbers that multiply together to equal negative 9 but add up to positive 8. Are going to be um, positive 9 and negative 1. So 9 times negative 1 is negative 9, but 9 minus 1 or positive 9 plus negative 1 is a positive 8. So these are the coefficients of my middle terms. So now we're going to factor by grouping. Cut these in half, factor out a 3x which gives you x plus 3. From these two terms, you would factor out a negative 1. And when you factor out a negative 1, that will change this sign. So this sign becomes positive. If you were to multiply it back together, it would equal what you started with. Now factor out your x plus 3 and put the 3x minus 1 together. So, and then bringing this factor down. So these are all of the factors of the polynomial that we started with. So if we write this now, it's called factored form. This is now factored in factored form. If we were to set each factor equal to zero, which we really don't have to do with the first one since um, we already had that negative one there, but just so you understand that how those are connected. Those, uh, that negative one comes from a factor of x plus one, and that x plus one is a factor of the entire polynomial. But then we also have a factor of x plus three, which would give you, a, if we set that equal to zero and subtract three, we get x equals negative three. If we take the three x minus one and set that equal to zero, Add 1 to both sides, then you get 3x equals 1, divide by 3, and x equals 1 third. All right, so our three actual solutions are x equals negative 1, x equals negative 3, and x equals positive 1 third. And they do happen to be in this list up here of possible rational roots. However, they are not always going to be rational. There are going to be some problems that you end up factoring things that have, say, maybe an x squared plus or minus a number, and you're going to get square root solutions or imaginary solutions. So um, be careful of that. All right, so that concludes our notes for today. You have, I believe, six problems to do for homework. Good luck.